All right, first off, uh, Morning. thank you guys for coming out again. I honestly do appreciate you all uh, showing interest in our program. Uh, Saturday night was a great night uh, for our fans in our stadium. Like I said in the post game, <laughs> so much credit to our great fans. You go back and watch that series of events the way that the game ended. I, mean, like, I had nothing but a smile on my face, just like I was giddy past the, after the game. I mean, not because of a win, but because of what our fans were capable of doing. And so it just shows how wonderful they are, what they're capable of. Going to implore them to have that same energy, that same excitement to fill the stadium as best they can this Saturday uh, because it makes all the difference. Our players see it, uh, but it also truly made a difference in the outcome of the game. So, again, credit to them, and that was a lot of fun. Still a lot of things to be learned from that game, you know, in all three phases. You know, I didn't think we were in sync and consistent was the word I used after the game, and I still going back and watching that film. And then, you know, you look back and still some missed tackles we got to get fixed. Offensively, getting the run game started earlier. And then, you know, special teams, I was not pleased. I thought we played very poorly on special teams. That ultimately comes down to me, um, our coaching staff, and then, you know, putting the guys in the right position. But two costly penalties, I think we had close to 120 what we call hen yards uh, that we missed on special teams because of whether it was return that was called back because of a penalty. But, you know, really, other than, you know, PAT and field goal and, and our, our our block unit it didn't think it was a very clean game, special teams wise. So we have to get better at that. That's a, a third of the game uh, that we've got to find a way to continue to improve upon. Moving forward, obviously, a uh, great opponent in North Texas coming to town. Um, you know, you know a few of the players down there. Uh, be a great afternoon, the Liberty Bowl in Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. But look, you know, they got one of the top rushing offenses in the country. They got one of the most experienced, I think the number 10 most experienced offensive line in the country. They got a guy that started over 50 games for their five offensive linemen returning starters so they know how to run the football effectively. And then their linebacker, Katie Davis, is probably the best linebacker I've seen on film. So they've got players. Uh, they're going to be hungry coming in here and try to find a way uh, to get it done. But we're focused on this week, trying to go 1-0 and and excited to get a week of prep underneath our belt. You say best on film this season or like overall? Uh, just, just I've seen some good ones, but yeah, he's so far. I mean, he's he's a very very talented player, and we know we've faced some good teams already. Um, but yeah, he's he can fly around, he can move, and he's he's special. So for the second half, you guys um, threw 11 passes, I think, to the run game. You guys are obviously trying to establish the run. Is that kind of a diet you guys want to try to you know do, or is that something you guys are looking at and saying, hey? You know, we, we might want to tweak how we try to lean on the run when the pass game is working so well, obviously, in the game. Yeah, I think anything. I think, like we talked about before, I would love ideal balance, right? The 50-50 balance is great. Um, you know, our first four years here, people always forget that I think we ran the ball like 65% of the time. And the question that we always got asked, are you running the ball too much? Well, okay, if it, if it works, it works. Um, part of our run game is... You know, we've got some guys with some speed, but it seems like more we're delivering body blows, body blows, body blows, and then midway through the third. And that's the way now three games in a row we're seeing the run game start to open up uh, later in the third quarter and then the fourth quarter. Um, the nature of it is we want to be relatively balanced and try to get going. We're going to see what works for us, right? Seth was having a big game. The receivers, you know, uh, Caden had a big game. Uh, but we were able to see some of the lanes start to open up in the run game, and so that's why we stuck with it a little bit more later in the game. Well, are you concerned, though, that if, some, if the pass game is working, is that something you're looking at and we're saying, hey, we do want to establish the run, but maybe we should stick with what's working, especially in a game where Arkansas State couldn't stop the pass? Really? Yeah, but uh, they're right. They did struggle to stop the pass. The run game was very effective for us later in the game, so I'm not going to look back and they win and say, man, we probably should have passed the ball more when the run game worked. If it wasn't working, we lost the game. Yes, shame on me um, that we, we stuck with the run game maybe when it wasn't working. We're going to do whatever we think is best for us to take advantage of, right? If they're now stopping the pass, right, they've got great coaching staff. They get paid well, too. So what they're doing is they saw we were attacking the pass. Well, okay, so now they're dropping in. If they're going to live us with a 4-1 box, we're going to hand the ball off. And a part of that's part of the RPO game. Um, we've got a very intelligent quarterback, so if he says, okay, hey, the run game is here, right, and now that safety is dropped out where he's coming in and keeping nose in, he hands the ball off and he gains 15 yards, I'm not going to say, man, we probably could have passed it for 12 yards. So um, put, put a lot of that, but I think it was showed that it was successful regardless of what the play calling was in the second half. Speaking of sad plays, yeah. you found a few plays to get Sutton in there. Was that um, – because of the, the body blows of the running game, or did you kind of go into the game knowing you wanted to get him out there? You know, I, I've mentioned Sutton Smith in the summer, and he, you know, he was a guy that didn't get here till June first. And you know, you get—we've been very fortunate to have some great running backs, and I kind of saw some dynamic flashes from him this summer. I said, "Man, this kid 
He's not ready, right? And, but he's got a chance to continue to develop, and you get to see those in practice. And he's not getting a ton of reps because of, right, the Brandon Thomas, Jay Ducker, Asa Martin. So now, you, but you get to see some flashes, and you say, okay, this kid's got a chance. And, you know, where does it fall into the game? Where was, okay, hey, he's got a chance to see maybe the mid zone concept work a little bit. Okay, hey, this is where the hole may be. Obviously, he made some guys miss, right? Even when it wasn't as well blocked up as it should be, right? He was able to continue to get uh, yards after contact. And so I had confidence. I didn't know it was at this game, but I kind of looked over in the house and said, let's put him in. And uh, he proved that he was did a nice job. And he's now somebody that maybe we can count on in the mix as well. What did you see from him recruiting? What was, the, what was the process of finding Yeah, you know, so Sutton was actually our very first commitment from that class. And I remember he was in town, came an unofficial visit. He FaceTimed me after the unofficial visit that night in the hotel. And uh, he FaceTimed me and goes, Coach, I'm ready to commit. I said, oh, oh, man, you just made my weekend. And um, just a phenomenal young man. And so the whole recruiting process, but then he continued to get a lot of offers. I mean, he was able, he got uh, multiple Power Five committable offers in fact took other official visits kind of made me you know it's one of those it's like hey we're kind of dating but i'm gonna go look and so uh he took some other official visits but he was loyal to us our very first commitment that multiple offers uh people talked to him about and i owe money also he said you know what memphis i came here for the right reason the right fit and we kept talking about the, the type of player he is and like i said i'm not calling him kenny gainwell but he's got that unique skill set you know, if we get to the point once he understands the running back position, maybe he can be that guy that plays a little bit of that slot receiver that can we move, can move around. Hey, Tony Pollard, maybe he can now be on some special teams, move in the backfield, put him out at slot receiver. Now teams are going to say, well, where do we do it? Do we put a safety on? Do we put a linebacker? Is he a running back? And I think that will allow us to be take advantage to what teams may think he is. And uh, he's got that unique skill set. He's going to continue to learn, right? Coming here in June and all of a sudden, you know, being thrown into the mix in September, uh, means we speak volumes not only of the type of physical capabilities he does, but the you know how smart he is and how he can handle the playbook. If everyone stays healthy, would you still consider redshirting him? Like, how does you know he can play four games, right? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's one of those I always, you know, before you'd never want to play freshman. Like, hey, screw it. Now there's this thing called the transfer portal and all this stuff. So, um, and I, and I and I mean this kind of half-heartedly, like. I hope that's an issue and a conversation I get to have four years from now with Sutton. Like, hey, you know, man, I'm sorry I burnt your red shirt, but guess what? You know, you're playing at a high level. And those, but that's the reality of it, right? I mean, if, if a guy is still – hopefully I'm still here in four years. Hopefully he's still here in four years. And those are the conversations that, man – and so we'll see how it goes. Now, there are some guys you get to the point where you're like, okay, do we play that one game? Is it the bowl game, right? Do you sit him out for that? Yeah. And so – We'll see how that goes. We've also done some guys to get nicked up, right? Hey, when will he come back during the season? You know, perfect example is a guy like Bryce Edmondson, who played some for us last year as a freshman. And it was this year, hey, when's he come back from his injury? See a guy that you just make this his redshirt year? Because last year he played in eight games in a lot of special teams. Does this year end up being his redshirt year based off of when he comes back? So you kind of see how the, the season goes. But yeah, it's a, it's a unique deal. It's part of that roster management as well. well since you have four. What made you choose this to be the debut? Uh, I would like to say, you know, some analytical thing. It was more of a truly a gut feeling because I saw what he was capable of at practice. And, um, and I just said, okay, here's the time. And I thought as we talk about the body blows and all that stuff, I, I said, okay, here's where I think the run game is going to be able to start to, to expand. But credit to him, he made some guys miss. So it wasn't like we sit there and said, oh, it's just blocked up and the freshman got the plays that he was capable. But uh, he made some – he made the – the thing work and just confidence in him. And he had told me, he goes, coach, I'm ready. He told me that two weeks ago. I said, no, you're not. He told me that last week, I'm ready. And then, you know, uh, Saturday morning at breakfast, he goes, coach, I'm ready. I said, I think you might be, but I can't promise you that, you know, so just always, you always want them to prepare like they're starters. And that goes because we know, right, with injuries, the things that occur throughout a college football season, you want those guys to always prepare like they're the starter. And, you know, one of the great things about a guy like Sutton Smith and, we have um, some other players that do this. If you ever come out and you get a chance, to, when you guys do get to see some of the practice, sometimes they actually stand like 20 yards behind the ball. And they may not get a single rep during that period, but he is sitting there going through the play like he's getting the ball. And 
all he's doing is put himself through the mental paces. This is no physical harm to his body. He's not any more wear and tear. He's not making contact with anybody. But now, okay, what's the protection? Boom, just stepping through. We've got a couple of quarterbacks that take the drops and go through their progression read and make sure they point it out. And, and credit to him, right, because a lot of guys would rather go just take a knee and hang out with their buddies. And then if it's, they get called in, great. If not, they're just going to hang out in the shade. And uh, he's went out there paying great attention to detail, and obviously it paid dividends this Saturday. So the last couple weeks we were asking about the run game, and you said that you guys could face light boxes and then we would be crazy about how the run game got back on track. Saturday, you guys faced heavy boxes, got the run game on track, and the passing game was still there. Is that pretty close to the ideal offensive game and balance for you guys moving forward? I think that part of that is, right? I mean, I, I and I first admit, we would like to establish, I didn't think we blocked really well up front the first half. Uh, in the run game, you know, we had a missed assignment on pass protection and gave up a sack. Um, but I think, you know, we, we've got to find that better balance earlier in the game. But it, again, we're going to take what if, if you watch that number 21, right, he was in the box, in the box, in the box. And that's why we, you know, we had some unique schemes that we hadn't shown before to kind of put him, as we call him, an adjuster into a little bit of conflict. And, you know, he was making plays in the run game, making plays in the run game. But as the passing game was opening up, Right, we were fine. Some of those, you know, we asked about, talked about um, Caden in the red zone. I forgot who asked about that, as him being a red zone target. And now all of a sudden you're opening up some different seams. Now that guy that's trying to play the run, well, I got to defend the tight end. Now maybe it's going to work more out to find that run game seam. So, um, and that's a great thing, like I said, going back to being able, Seth put us in the right position to say, okay, hey, if it's an RPO, okay, well, this one now, the guy's out of the way. Let's hand the ball off and figure this thing out. So, have you considered. I know he's not starting for them, Grant Canal in North Texas. Have you considered how different things could be if he had just if he had been healthy last summer? You know, I think we could play the what if game with a lot. Of, I mean, it's you know, I, and whether it's guys that are here or move on, you always wish those guys that move on the best because if I sat there and tried to control everybody that wanted to leave for a variety of reasons. It'd be it'd be a long you know I'm wasting time uh, you know hey you we gotta go somewhere because of that you talk to them about why they want to leave um, but I wish them the best at North Texas other than this Saturday um, but it is interesting you think if he's healthy but again credit goes to Seth I think Seth you know, we go back on it and I know that well did Seth win the job because he was a uh, maybe more capable or was it because Grant was injured I think it's just one of those perfect combinations of things that occurred and in the universe, and then it worked out, and I think we're quite pleased with Seth's progression. Um, and I know Grant's a heck of a football player as well. How was that process in the spring and then post spring with him? Was it contentious? Was it? How would you describe? No, was Grant. It? Grant and I had always had a great relationship. I, I, you know, there's there's young men that have, they're no longer part of the roster. I can honestly say that. Last conversation I had with him was, you know, after practice. All right, see you tomorrow. Sometimes they don't show back up. There's also been people we've removed. Grant was, you know, those Grant and I had adult conversations, sat down, discussed it. Um, I've got a lot of respect for him. He wants to play ball. Um, he, he's capable. He certainly has proven that. I mean, anybody that watched him, even while I was here, even previously here at Arizona and um, in the spring, right, the spring game, he played fantastic and did some really good things. And he, he's a top line class act, and I wish him nothing but the best. Imagine when Seth is playing at the level he's playing, Probably just all, all in all, just easier to stomach. I yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, and that's the, the quarterback situation is one of those, right? You always, do I make the right decision? And I, I always like to compare things to just kind of history of the game that I love, that we all love, right? We all love football. You go back, like Drew Blitzo, and this is a complete different comparison. Some of you guys are going to look at me sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Blitzo gets hurt on a late hit out of bounds. Well, Tom Brady, they weren't sure. Do they, they move on from him? Is he good enough? Tom Brady goes in, and then it's like, wow, well, we realized what we really had. And um, and that's just kind of the nature of that quarterback position. Did you make the right choice? Did you do that? Um, you know, And we're seeing this ever-changing in that position. I think I'm going to throw a stat probably wrong. 55% of quarterbacks in Division One are transfers, or maybe it's even 55% of the starters are transfers. So did you make the right choice? You know. Last year, we knew that there's a lot of risk in playing a, a true freshman quarterback. It was the first time in program history we did that. I'm hoping, like I tell you guys all the time, I'm really putting our, you know, pushing our chips in with Seth. That, right, that development that he occurred last year, playing those games as a true freshman, it wasn't always pretty. He played at a very high level. Um, and now we're going to see, okay, man, he's playing better game in and game out, and we hope that. 
you know, as a true sophomore, we're going to see him continue to improve. So. How do you, you sum up the level he's gone to the last two games? Like <coughs> eight hundred passing yards, five touchdowns, no turnovers. He's that been that up? he's been dynamic. Well, I argue that he did put the ball on the ground twice. Okay. I let him know that actually three times. So um, we've got to fix that. We can't be putting the ball ground because to me that's a turnover in my own mind uh, as I talk with him. Um, but he's great. You know the conversations that he's able to now have on the sideline in game are light years ahead of what it was last year. You know, into three games last year, I'd say what happened there blank stare on his face like I, what play are you talking about what you know now he can go back and has great memory recall of yes this is what happened here's where the safety was or our coach you know I, I saw this and that's why I did okay good and we can have those coach like conversations about what we saw and he's able to have great conversations with coach Cramsey about those things so his progression his development is, is every single week in year two you're going to continue to see it progress and uh, we got to continue to own the football and be great with that but it's been a lot of fun to watch him continue to do great things. When Hennigan and, and Gunnell were battling it out, did you foresee at all the kind of production you were going to get in the next 14 games from this kid? You know, you, you can never bank on, hey, this thing. But I think we saw what he was capable of. And that's one of the reasons why we entrusted him to start as an 18-year-old, as a true freshman. right? You, you never know. right? You're not going to put in a, a true freshman and say, OK, he's going to be top of the line. Yeah, we've just played a six-year senior, and you see what they're capable of. You, you play a guy like Will Rogers, you see those guys are in the systems, you see what they're capable of. Um, we knew that Seth has great potential. And he hadn't even scratched the surface of what he's capable of. That's what's so great about him is, like, if you ask Seth, like, hey, you, he's sure he's playing at a great high level, but are you capable of more? Oh, and he could rat off 6,000 things. And um, that's the great thing about him is he understands what he's going to be able to continue to develop upon. Um, to say that I knew that he would be able to do what he's doing, no. And if I could foresee that on every recruit, I'd be doing, I'd do doing a lot better because I think we were us and one other score is only Division One offers. And so, um, but yeah, we knew what he was, the, the intangibles that make him so great, and then being able to tie it in week in and week out, and he's got to do it at a consistent level. So after the game, you said that um, one of the things that bothered you were, were the explosive plays on defense. After watching the film. Was that an execution thing or kind of what went into to those explosive players? Yeah, Frank, it, it goes back. I still think we're missing too many tackles. And I think, you know, obviously, look, the wide open wheel route, that was a, a miscommunication, a missed assignment, a lack of execution, the two-point play, you know, where they were able to get to the flat, uh, put that on me. Uh, that's on me as a coach. I got to do a better job putting our guys in the right position. The missed tackles is something that is concerning to me. It truly is. You go back and say, okay, what is it? And does that mean, oh, okay, now you go do more live reps? Well, then putting certain people at risk for injury because the biggest thing is a lot of us we know is availability is more important than ability, you know, as the season progresses. And um, as we look at it and say, okay, what can we do? Can we tackle more bags? Do we need to spend more time on it? Um, you know, do we maybe get the look squad to uh, maybe make some more live periods? And, you know, I sat down with Coach Barton and said, okay, how can we continue to address this? Looking at it, is it certain angles that we're taking? And uh, there's a lot of teachable moments, but I think a lot of that is, you know, some missed tackles and continue to make sure that we're sh shoring up uh, the details of this defensive scheme. You, you did hold them, I think, like 300 fewer yards than a year ago. Um, <laughs> and, you, and that wide receiver didn't really do all that much. I'm curious, the secondary particularly, we've talked a lot about Quindell. How are those other guys doing? It seemed like Ru was Ruben on the wide receiver a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you compare you know, this year's game to last year's game, you'll say, well, last year you guys were saying, Ryan, what, what's going on with the passing defense? And I was like, I was sweating when you guys were asking that question last year, and hopefully I was not having to do that as much. But, yeah, credit to the rest of the secondary. Look, was it a perfectly clean game? No. And it's anytime you're out there on an island, uh, Greg Rubin played a fantastic game. I think Davion Ross really, really played well. Um, you know, he's a, a young man. You know, um, Evan, I know you talked about the transfer. Board. He's a guy that doesn't get a lot of credit. I mean, he was uh, – Davion's been fantastic. And, you know, he got the true start there for corner at, opposite of Greg. You got to see Julian Burnett go in there, who hadn't pl pl played a ton for us other than on special teams. So Julian was able to do some good things. And then Josh Hastings got the start at safety as well, and, and he did some nice things. Really a clean game. Josh wasn't a big stack. You didn't see him maybe because he was you know, able to just do what his job at a high level. So was it perfect? No. We got a lot of things to clean up. But uh, all in all, that was an ex explosive offense. I'm, I'm telling you, I think Arkansas State's going to win a lot of football games. Coach. Speaking of transfers, skates obviously has had to come back the last two games. 
when you were looking at him, I know Cranes, you talked about him being an over-the-top guy. Did you guys expect him to be kind of that missing piece to kind of be that, you know, bring more explosion to this offense? We knew, you know, going back to even like the Seth Coyce, we knew what he was capable of. And you see it. And when you get limited film on these transfers, because generally he wasn't going to, you know, he wasn't going to leave Iowa State if he had 50 catches last year. He was going to stay in place and, and, and be just fine there. But I think we saw some flashes of the things that they were able to do. And we knew he had that explosive um, tendency to be able to get the stretch of field. And then I think it's, you know, you hope he grows every week, right? First week, very limited reps versus Mississippi State. Misses the one, and, I, and I, he'll be the first to admit he was probably looking back for the ball a little too long. Um, the next week, one explosive, and then that was kind of it. And then this week we saw him be able to do a few little more things. Again, same deal. He put the ball on the ground, so uh, we chewed his butt out for that. But um, I do think he is another one of those pieces of added depth, right? And, again, I'm not talking – you can never replace Calvin Austin, but, hey, how do we find the depth of a variety of guys? You guys saw that Javon Ivory was, you know, out of the game for a little bit. And so now, okay, Joe Skates, you guys step up. Rock Taylor, who had been pretty quiet the first few games, right, goes and makes that dynamic catch, and then the next play, another catch. So I think just being able to find those guys that can – fill those voids and continue to play at a high level will, will help us down the road. And speaking of that, you've now had, you know, several offensive linemen, you know, depart since the spring. Obviously, we've just heard about Ira, Henry, and um, Devontae Dobbs, and I think Brian Houston as well. How confident do you feel about your depth at offensive line, especially with you just mentioning the blocking has to improve a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, the O-line will always be, and I think anytime you talk about the trenches, you're always worried about the depth, um, especially at this level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I go back to – I remember in my days in the NFL, it was hard to find five good O-linemen, right? And in college football, you hope you can have a rotation of maybe, you know, seven or eight that you feel comfortable with. Uh, I feel like we're right there. We've got guys that we feel like we can trust to get in. Um, you know, Kyle and Pounder started the first game at left tackle, went out with an injury, right? Continue to bring him along. He's a, a very talented uh, redshirt freshman. We've got some other guys. You saw Braxton Alford went in there for Jonah Gamble. Uh, it seemed like they were able to produce without skipping a beat. So feel good about the depth. Got to keep developing as the season goes on, even if they're not necessarily in the starting lineup. So you still pretty good about it, even though three linemen are the thing. Are you still feel good about the depth you do have, right? Yes, absolutely. And yeah. McCarlin, how is he doing at this point? Is he? Yeah, he's doing well. Yep, still, he's doing still, well. Still day to day. Yep. Ron, what is it about Gabe Rogers that is allowing him to kind of prosper this this season? We always knew Gabe was a fantastic athlete. I mean, it goes back to three years ago when we returned the kick versus Navy. Everybody said, who is that guy? And, um, you know, he came here. We put him at defensive back. Um, and just kind of one of those things that I always say this, he, he moves a lot faster and thinks a lot faster going that way than he does going this way. And, you know, it, him and I sat down um, after my first season here and, and kind of discussed where we thought his role may benefit us as a team and you know last year was his first year on offense and we saw some flash so um, he's one of those when he's able to go he can go and he's capable he's shown that he is able to do some explosive things with the ball in his hand not only as a kickoff returner but as a receiver and so a uh, dynamic athlete um, very dangerous in space has great speed he's a long strider you know for a guy who's maybe not 6'2 uh, he's a long strider, so sometimes it's like, oh, wait, how fast? And then all of a sudden you look at the ground he's covering, you say, wow, he can really get up and get out. So uh, I just think the capabilities he's able to have, he's an explosive player that uh, we got to continue to find ways to get the ball in his hand. And you said last year one of his issues was that he was kind of second-guessing himself on the field. Have you seen – how have you seen that change for him this season? Absolutely. I think that's like with anybody that's – right. It really, last year's first year as an offensive player. And so learning the system and then be able to process and play at a fast level. It's kind of like a quarterback, right? The first year you're learning the system and trying to pro – now it's – I understand the system completely. Now I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I'm not sitting there slowing myself down. Oh, wait, was that a cover two? Oh, it was a cover three in the middle of field close. Now I'm supposed to do this with my route. It's just happening quicker. And a guy that's that fast, right, now all of a sudden you'll be able to see that put on tape day in and day out. And it, it's been great for him. And you're exactly right. When he doesn't have to think, he's a hard guy to guard.